Are you feeling stuck, lost, tired, or uninspired? We've all been there, including myself. I'm Coach Des, mindset motivator and lifestyle entrepreneur. I'm here to tell you that the best, unapologetic, and limitless version of yourself is yet to come. The Born Unbreakable podcast is here to inspire just that. With motivating guests from all different walks of life and around the world, their stories will empower you to unlock abundance and your unbreakable spirit. Do you need accountability? Reach out to me for a free consultation of how I can support you in reaching your maximum potential. This episode is brought to you by Korma Date Coffee, the healthy alternative to coffee. This delicious date coffee has the health benefits of giving you natural energy, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Best of all, Korma is caffeine-free. No jitters, no anxiety, and no afternoon crash. Go to KormaCafe.com, that's K-O-R-M-A-C-A-F-E.com, and enter discount code BORNUNBREAKABLE at checkout to get 10% off your order. Welcome to the Born Unbreakable podcast. I'm over here chopping it up with my guest. Before we hit record, I have SF Banks with me today. We were talking about sports and our disappointment. I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and lie about it, you know. I'm a San Francisco 49ers fan and they were about this close, if, well, if anybody's watching this on video, um, to making it to the Super Bowl. And we've just had so many moments like this over the last few years where well, and have gone so far to make it to the Super Bowl and just, just can't get that W at the end of the finish line. It's been an emotional roller coaster. I think the Rams and the Bengals deserve, you know, this game this weekend. And they earned it. It's going to be good. But I, I I have heartbreak. It's a real thing. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. We were talking about college football. Yeah. Because you're, you're an Alabama fan. Yeah. Yeah. So. And it, it cuts deep, man. It cuts deep to lose to Georgia. It, it does. But, I mean, we whooped them for, uh, let's see, what, four or five times straight. So I feel good about that. But, but you never want to lose to Georgia. No. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. living in Georgia. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, so you're repping the ATL originally from Seattle, but That's you're right. holding it down in the dirty south That's right. right now. Yeah. And you know, SF, I'm really excited to, you know, have you on the show. For those of you who are joining, tuning in, this is really special because today we're talking about motivating our youth. Yeah. So SF is actually the publisher of You Can Have It All, which is a magazine that helps to motivate youth. And you're also the creator of Camp Warrior King International. So we'll talk about those conferences that you put on. Uh, But, you know, before we get into how and, you know, you got to the space of motivating youth and putting on these conferences, I imagine you have your own story. Yeah. <laughs> of growing up as a youth at one lovely point in your life. So I would love for you to talk about your story. All right. So, I mean, growing up, the pretty much I remember like the, the biggest break was I remember what life was like before crack hit the inner city and what it was like after crack hit. And before, you know, it was like, Mayberry, right? It was like sunny outside every day growing up as a kid. You can go outside, you could play. You know, there weren't really any big concerns because you were it was a community. And once crack hit, it was like a dark cloud came over the inner city. It was like night and day. The person that was, you know, your barber or the person that was, you know, where you would go to the corner store and they own that store. Now those same people or some of those same people were now the ones that were breaking into your house or breaking into your car because you know crack was just that devastating and so with that you know i you know saw a lot of friends that went down the wrong path you know a lot of relatives that got affected by drugs uh, a lot of uh, people in the community were affected by that and you know that kind of built a an anger in me as a kid to want to have a different life 
And so that's what spurred me to always push hard and go after, you know, more. And that was hard because, you know, there were so many people that didn't want to change their life. And so when you want to do something different and the people around you don't, then they try to keep you where they are. And so that made it really tough for me, but I had to push through it. And so, you know, that was one of the things I really experienced as a kid and, you know, what my mom helped me with uh, pulling out of and also my dad. Mm -hmm. What, what support system did you have and what, what kind of motivation did you have growing up in Seattle? Uh, mo well, my support system, of course, with my parents uh, was the best support system that I had. Uh, and then there was still a sense of community. So when I was a kid, when I was like six years old, my mom put me in martial arts and that's where everything started because she wanted me to have discipline and to have that respect. And then we played football. And so the coaches were always, you know, mentors and, you know, it was it was a lot of that that really helped me to get to where it is that, that I am today. Just a lot of community help and a lot of support uh, without that, you know, without any question, I would be where a lot of people I knew, you know, growing up where they are now. So you had a foundation of that, the family support, community support, but not everybody has that. Right. You know, a lot of our youth today and we're talking about still being in a pandemic. We're talking about youth that don't get out even as right. much because of the situation, the circumstances that we're in. And so finding motivation can be can be challenging, you know, because of lack of resources, access to those resources. So what was the catalyst for you starting the magazine and these conferences that you put on? Well, the everything really started out of really out of a tragedy that happened with my family. So my aunt and cousin were murdered in a domestic violence situation. And that was what really rocked our family. And what it did for me uh, was, you know, I was very angry by it. And I said, I want to do something one day. And it took about 15 to 20 years before that even came to fruition. But the first thing was the Iron Defense Institute. And that was where I was teaching women and children how to defend themselves from aggressive attackers. From there, I started to see that there was a big need for personal development in youth. Uh, there were kids that didn't have, you know, they lacked self-confidence, they lacked focus, they lacked discipline. They didn't have a, a good solid foundation to be able to lean on when things were hard. And so, you know, we want to do something about it. And there was a big need for summer camps in the Atlanta area. I took it for granted. I thought that everybody was doing it. Uh, I, for one, did not want to work with kids. I had zero passion where I couldn't stand kids. <laughs> I didn't want to work with, I mean, I couldn't stand them. I didn't want to work with kids at all. It was like, there's no way I'm going to work with kids. Like never. And, um, and, and, but there was such a big need. And when I saw that need, I had to do something about it. And so Camp Warrior King came into play and we started having youth camps uh, with hundreds and hundreds of kids. And then that's where you can have it all conference came from out of that need, because there were kids that weren't in our camp that weren't being motivated. So we want to put something together where we can get all the kids around the city and then kids from different cities to come to the conference. And then, you know, there started to be a need internationally. So we said, OK, well, you know, where are the countries that, you know, need this the most? And then so we started going to those places. And then it was, okay, we can't get to all these places. Okay, what do we do now? And that's where the magazine came from. How can we get to more youth faster all around the globe so that, because motivation is a universal language. Every person around the world, well, you know, generally speaking, want to be motivated. And so how can we get this in their hands faster than trying to do conferences? There was no way we'd get to them all. And so that's where the magazine came from. That's how it was all birthed. That is yeah. brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliant. And yeah. you're right. Motivation is a universal language. So this camp, walk yeah. me through what the experience is like. How, how, does, how does someone sign up for it? And, and what does it look like from start to finish? Oh, man. So Camp Warrior King is like a camp on steroids is how the kids describe it. And, you know, of course, they go online, they get registered. We have a waiting list every year. So we open registration in January uh, for a camp that doesn't start until, you know, May, the end of May. Uh, a lot of people will start signing up in August. So as soon as camp is over, they'll start paying their registration for the following year. And what it looks like is a huge like family reunion and like party for like 10 weeks. So we take the kids 
they go spelunking. We teach them how to shoot, how to fish. Uh, we teach them how to do 3D archery. They do karate, boxing, football. We have fashion shows. We have talent shows. We do, there's girls workshops. We take the kids to different states and see different things. We're doing, I mean, all kind of stuff. We're going, like, for example, this year, uh, we're going to a turtle farm where they like, <laughs> yeah, they rehab turtles. And so the camp, the kids at the camp are going to get to uh, adopt a turtle, which would be really cool, uh, and be able to see the turtle, like, get back to health and go back out into the wild. Uh, we take them horseback riding. Uh, we do, I mean, if you think about it, we do it. We have a color blast at the end. This past season, we had a celebrity basketball game. So, like, Jagged Edge was there, Goody Mob, uh, all the, you know, local Atlanta artists were there. And we just try to give them as much excitement in love as we can because you know you don't know what they're dealing with back home right you don't know what they're going through so we want to keep them motivated so for um for two and a half months yeah it were turned up yeah they are turned <laughs> yeah. up yeah i was yeah. for some reason in my head i was like oh camp you know camp that's like a week yeah you kind of do that you go home this is serious yeah it's serious when you play on steroids this is this is a little how do you curate mm -hmm all of the individuals that help to put this on i can't imagine that is a small task no it's it's a huge task i mean uh we have uh, a large staff uh, that help with planning over the course of the year uh because like one of the things we like to do with the kids is we we travel in motor coaches anywhere we go right so we don't use like the cheese buses now i want them in motor coaches so they got ac they're raised up there's tvs there's music, you know, they're just having a party the whole time. There's bathrooms, because I'm like, I don't want to stop to use the bathroom. So there's bathrooms. I already know. I'm trying to, oh God, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's, you know, we just try to create that experience and it takes a lot of work, right? It's a lot of work. We're open. I mean, we run pretty much seven hours, excuse me, we run 12 hours a day, uh, wow. five days a week. And it's just, it's just intense, right? It's, it's, but it's a lot of fun. And the thing is, is that we have a lot of fun doing it. And so the kids have a good time as well. Now, how old, what's the age range? Uh, we work with kids ages five to 15. So, oh, wow. That's yeah. very broad. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it's real broad. And our, our biggest group, surprisingly, is our teens. So, which is really different because in most camps, it's the little kids and teens don't want to be there. But our largest group are our teenagers. I mean, we have well over a hundred teenagers at our camp uh, any given season because of the way that we run the camp, the way that they get to have a sense of freedom uh, to be able to tour around the city. They go to different restaurants, meet all kinds of cool people. Uh, and it's just keeping them driven and excited. Uh, we have development workshops. We have speakers. We fly in all the time that come in and talk to the kids uh, wow. just to keep it fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about the repeat kids are there kids that you see who started when they were five and they keep showing up absolutely uh we have a high retention rate uh, at our camp and we have a high referral rate at our program uh, most of the people that are coming back are people that have been there from the beginning uh, and they keep coming back every year which puts the the onus on us to keep creating different activities and things to do every year so they, they keep the pressure on, you know, they'll say, ah, oh, we did that last year. We don't want to do that again. You know, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we got to come up with different activities, but it, the kids work through the camp or go through the camp. And then when they age out, they come back and work at the camp. And so what we have now, yeah, is we have a lot, a lot of kids that want to come back and work at the program. So I don't have an issue with finding staff as much as I used to in the beginning, because I have kids that want to come work. And what that does is it allow they already know what's expected right they know they know the work ethic they know what's required they know how i am right so they're like all right let's get the work don't done. get it twisted don't get it twisted they already know <laughs> <laughs> like you already know we already know we tell the parents every year hey we hey we don't need your money man like hey we're not gonna deal with your bad kid <laughs> they can't follow instructions they out of here <laughs> Right. Yeah. There's a big sense of discipline, right? And so when you say wait list, that means not everybody can get in. That's right. Yeah, it's a wait list. Not everybody can get in. So, uh, you know, we always encourage the parents to, you know, to register early, to get started early because we have a wait list every single year. And what happens is that, you know, you might be able to get in, but it won't be for the whole time. 
So we might have a family that'll because once you're in, you're in for the summer. Right. Your okay. registration will guarantee you for the whole time. So if you come for two weeks and let's say you want to go out of town, go on vacation, you can do that. And then that spot, there's two weeks available and we'll go on the list and say, hey, look, we got two weeks. You can come to camp. And they're like, no question. They come like, bow, bow, bow. Like, send them. yeah, yeah. But get yeah. this kid off of my hands. please. Yeah, please. Yeah. Thank you. Especially with like COVID. the whole time, if possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Let's be honest. This is yeah. parents, you know, when we think about what they're doing in the home, they're trying to create these moments, these experiences. Right. But on top of that, they're working, yep. right? They're working, they're doing what they need to do. And right. so, you know, and school, gosh, don't even get me started on what that looks like now. Right. Right. So it's it's a whole new ball game. So this is this is really creating something that gives the kind of quality interactions and, you know, like you said, motivation right. that keeps people excited Absolutely. about life. Absolutely. Oh my God. Okay. So what about the testimonials? So now, so you've talked about kids that are, you know, become staff members. So that's probably a, the biggest testimony. Mm -hmm. What are the kinds of things that, that people who participate in the camp have told you their feedback? Uh, well, the parents really, really love the program. I mean, we do, we have tons and tons of testimonials on our website uh, from parents that talk about what they love about the program. And, you know, the things that the parents like about the program is a sense of community. So we do things like Family Fridays, which is a big fish fry that we do for the parents and the kids at camp. And it's okay, I'll fly in for that. Yeah, yeah, come in. Yeah, and it's and it's all free. You know, like it's it's free for the parents. It's like come in, we fry fish, we have DJs, there's bouncy houses and water slides everywhere. And you know, and we're playing good music that everybody can listen to. The parents come and bring their lawn chairs, you know, people are pay dominoes or spades or something like that. And they're just having a good time. And it's just building a sense of community so that, you know, the kids can see adults and their parents laughing and talking, having a good time. People are eating barbecue and it just creates a very euphoric feeling. And, you know, that's one of the things that a lot of the people really like about the program. We, we do that several times throughout uh, the camp season uh, because it's a lot of fun. And they and they also really like our academic portion. So we're really about you know, developing the whole child. So as much as we have fun is the same amount of intensity we put into them learning. So you have what's called summer slide, right? And summer slide is just what happens when between May and August, when a child just is not in school. And so they start sliding back to the previous grade. They start forgetting the things that they learned. Mm -hmm. So the kids actually go to class uh, at camp in the morning, they get all their schoolwork out of the way. We have tutors on site. So kids that are lacking in reading and uh, math, we have tutors specifically for them. Uh, Dr. King is one of the best in the city of Atlanta. She comes to our camp every single year uh, and pours into the kids. Uh, and the kids are required to have a book every single day at camp. They must read every day at camp. They have to have a book uh, because leaders are readers. And that's what we teach uh, the kids at the program. So that's another thing that the parents really like is that, you know, they're getting so they're getting mentally stimulated as well mm -hmm. as physically. Yeah. So when they go home, I mean, they're dirty and they're tired. Yeah. That's exactly smart. how you want them to be. Yeah. 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 Leaders are readers. Yeah. T-shirt. T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right there. That's right. But, you know, well, and, that, and this is great because one of the questions I was going to ask you is there's this sense of euphoria you talked about being in that environment. But how does the motivation motivation continue when they're not? So when they're at home, you know, what are the kinds of things that are being encouraged for kids to love life and learning just as much when they're not in obviously the the more exciting party environment gotcha, <laughs> with gotcha. all their friends that they just made gotcha gotcha so one of the things that we do uh, is we have events throughout the year that encourage the kids you know to get them together and to talk about just those topics uh since COVID, it's been a little bit more challenging which is why the magazine has been so important uh because we're still able to get in contact with the kids or give them information that'll be motivating to them and, mm -hmm. and the things that we cover, we have things like success stacks. So we have the Team Hot Sauce success stacks and Team Hot Sauce are 
cartoon characters that pretty much build self-efficacy and motivation in children. And we have stacks of 65 words in these stacks and the words and phrases that kids can use to build their self-efficacy. So we have kids that practice those. So words like action, perseverance, discipline, focus, faith, innovation, different words that we want these kids to learn. If they're learning throughout the year and then using them in their everyday vernacular when they're going to school to kind of keep them, you know, uplifted and keep them going. Because what we teach our children at the camp is that you will have what you say and that words are seeds, words are powerful. So when you're using the right words, those words can create what it is that you want in life or it can create lead you to a destination that you don't want to be. So if you're talking about yourself and you're feeling bad about yourself and you're speaking bad into your own life, that's going to take you down that path. But if you're speaking life into yourself and positivity into yourself and using the right words and phrases, then it's going to you know take you down a different path. And so those are some of the things that we do uh, to develop. I think kids. there's adults that need your <laughs> 65 words. Yeah. And- need to practice that we yeah. we we can fall into that trap too i think yeah. it's one of those continuous learning things that you have to do throughout life yeah. is the word i talk about it all the time the words you choose how you speak how right. you talk to yourself is how you emanate your energy and how that resonates with other people right because you you create the energy and the space that you're in that's right and there's there's so much positive energy that you're bringing to the camp but also to the community this yeah. must be really big yeah. for the community. Yeah. It's amazing. So let's talk about the magazine okay. because that, that's the action. Um, and I would definitely encourage anybody. I'm going to have the uh, website in the show notes. So if you want to learn more you know, about the camp and everything, you can go check that out. Definitely worth seeing. Maybe you want to get on that wait list because it might take a minute yeah. <laughs> for you to, to get in there. Yeah. Um, but the magazine, so it's how long has the magazine been running now? Uh, the magazine has been running for, well, we started it a couple of years ago. Um, we launched it actually last year, uh, right in the middle of COVID. And since that time, um, you know, we've impacted about 10 different countries already uh, with the magazine, uh, which is really powerful. And it says a lot about the, the impact that, it, that it's making. Uh, and the need for it, uh, because, you know, there was a lot of questions about if, um, if kids would read, uh, a youth magazine, right. Kids don't like to read kids. don't like, and it's like, read? yeah, I like, read yeah. what, but it's like, they read? will read. Yeah. Right. Right. Like really they'll read, but they'll read what is they're it, interested in. Is there a video in. game attached right. to it? <laughs> maybe it's technology. Right. Right. Is there an incentive? Do I get something after doing it? it like what's the, like, I don't want to read. Um, but what we found is that children love to read. Right. They love to read what they're interested in. And so mm. the thing is, is that, yeah, a kid doesn't want to read. A, you know, I mean, if you got to read about Moby Dick, you know what I mean? Or if you got to read, you know, Huckleberry Friend, Finn, you may or may not be interested in that. <laughs> but if you get to read well, about pictures, right. like I think there's, there's a whale. Right. I there's a whale. Now. <laughs> right. Right. You know. But when you get to read about, you know, an athlete or you get to read about, you know, somebody like Cameron Shell who, uh, you know, pretty much invented the first drone that saved a human life or you're reading about, you know, McDonald's All-American that, you know, went to a high school that your friend or your cousin went to or you're reading about a kid in the UK that loves to skateboard and you're like, oh, man, I like to skateboard. and She's a, just a regular person like you. Then it builds a connection when you get to submit, you know, an opportunity to, you know, do artwork and per- perhaps win a prize for that, then it builds interest. And so when you get to read a book, comics, right? Or you get to see these cartoons or these different action figures, it builds interest. And so then kids will read what they're interested in, right? Because when you think about it, when kids listen, kids recite rap songs, but they really don't know what they're, what they're saying and they don't even mean it, but it's because it's interesting that they do it. So when you create something that's interesting for them, then they'll actually get into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny too because you're right. Half the time, they're not actually paying attention right. to to what it's being said. But there's a good beat. It's fun. You can dance to it, and then you figure it out later. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said, "What?" Right. 
Oh, that it meant that. Right. <laughs> oh, snap. Now I did. Yeah, I wasn't even. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. Right. But then, you know, and, and it's so important because, well, it's important to keep kids engaged, right? And there's a lot of stuff that, you know, people say, well, oh, well, the kids just have ADHD. Oh, they're just hyper and, you know, but... I think it's because when in your you are in your formidable years is when you have that curiosity. Right. And so we need to constantly help our youth fulfill that curiosity with things that are going to help them be good citizens, good people, right. you know, good contributors to, to their community um, and to society. And so I think that's the, the criticality of starting at five years old, you know, or as soon as you could do anything one these days, you know, kids can download stuff when they're like two. Right. So, <laughs> right. Pretty, pretty much as soon as you could do do anything, it's it's so necessary. But this magazine is such a powerful tool um, and platform and the fact that it so is it digital, like where people can go online and that's how they can get access to it everywhere with, through the internet. Right. Yeah. So it's digital. So Amazing. the magazine's digital, so they can read it right in their phone. Uh, we also have physical copies, uh, of course, for kids in domestic, you know, USA, so that mm -hmm. they can be able to get physical copies and hold it in their hand because there's something cool about being able to flip the pages or to be able to put a poster on your wall, uh, which we have in the magazine. So people have the option of you know having it in their phone or actually getting it shipped to them. And, mm -hmm. uh, and the thing is that the magazine is in five languages. And so that's one of the most profound things about them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what? well, yeah, because people that's all not, over the that's world, awesome. yeah, yeah. People all over the world need to be able to read it. So that's, that's the thing is that it's in multiple languages. So, um, English, Spanish, Portuguese, French, uh, Sri Lankan, uh, is, you know, and that's, where it is so that people can pick it up and be able to read it anywhere in the world or look at it on their phone and be able to read it anywhere in the world. That is so cool. Okay. Yeah. So then the content for that, mm -hmm. how is the content determined of what gets put in and how frequently is it uh, available? So the, con entities? well, the, the content is very carefully, right? Because we want to make sure that we're putting out a clear message, but then also not, um, stepping on the toes of other cultures, right? In, in a way that they don't want the magazine in their country. So that's probably the thing that takes the most most time is to make sure that the message is clear and that we're you know putting content in there that is pretty much uh, acceptable all over the world. Uh, and so that, that takes a lot of time. Right now, the magazine comes out pretty much every couple of months or every quarter. Uh, we're okay. getting the magazine out because it gives us time to be able to pretty much, you know, get the entries in from the kids, be able to determine, you know, which content we want to put in there, being able to get, you know, the languages and stuff set up, getting all that stuff situated, which takes a lot of work and effort. Uh, and that's that's how often we run it right now. And it'll probably stay that way uh, because we want the magazine to be very interactive and we want to be able to really unpack the information that's in there, uh, unpack the content uh, for a long period of time because it's just really rich with content and information. Um, for example, one of the things that we talk about in the magazine uh, is a parent section in the back. And there is, uh, you know, we talk about, you know, teen suicide. Right. And the person that writes that article, uh, her name is, is Kim, um, Kim Dooley. And Kim actually lost her daughter to that. And so it's a very touching issue, but it's something that's affecting kids, especially now with everything going on with COVID. So it makes it really, really, really important that we get that message out because it's affecting people all over the world. Um, people a lot of times think that, you know, someone on the other side of the globe is dealing with a totally different issue. The reality is they're dealing with the exact same issues you're dealing with in the United States. For example, a friend of mine, uh, you know, we were talking about the magazine and I was talking about, you know, a crack and growing up. And he said, you know, I used to go outside and see people with heroin needles in their arm, but he's over in Australia. Right. It's like, wow, we never thought, you know, things were so similar, but they are. Yeah. And that's what brings us together. Right. 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 Yep. And I'm and, well, and it's interesting, too, because you watch movies today in any language. 
whether it's an Asian language or, um, you know, in a Latin language. <coughs> and one of the things you notice is all the issues are the same, <laughs> you know, yeah. heartbreak, drugs, depression, all, yep. all these things. And that's really the thread. That's the common thread that, you know, brings the, the, the fabric that brings us together Absolutely. as humanity. And, and I think that's the, the beauty of what you're doing is it reminds us of that. Absolutely. It transcends yeah. color, you know, races and all, and all of that. That's right. So <clears throat> one of the questions that I have for you is what's next, you know? So when, when you think about where we are today and as you see the camp and the magazine, where do you want it to go three and five years from now? The, I want every kid in the world to have access to the magazine, number one. So the next three to five years is to have it uh, operating and moving in every country in the world. Um, and with technology, we're able to do that, uh, something that we couldn't do 10 years ago or 15 years ago. But now since everyone has access to technology, we can actually make that happen. And and that's what I'm going to do is to get the magazine all over the world, um, get it in use hands, because, like I said, motivation is a universal language. And the issues that we have in the world are only going to be solved by the future generations of the world because they're going to be living in it. So, you know, we don't know who is going to be the kid uh, that finds a cure to cancer or some of these diseases that we're dealing with or, you know, the climate issue that we're seeing. Uh, we don't know who's going to solve those issues. But what we want is for that kid to to persevere, to make it happen. So, you know, if they can see, you know, if we can write a quote in our magazine or a picture or they can read a story about someone that inspires them to go after their dream and they can put that in their room or hang it on their wall and that gets them to where they want to go, then we've done our job. And so, you know, our job is to get them the information because we don't know who that child is, who that person is or who that parent is. Right. They just might say, you know, I mean, I'm tired of being a parent. Right. I'm tired of having these kids. You know, I, I can't do it. But there might be somebody that wrote an article that says, you know, hey, I went through the same thing and it might help them go a little bit further. Uh, we had a young lady that we, we did a youth conference in Uganda, East Africa, and um, she wasn't going to come to the conference. She was um, well, actually, she wanted to take herself out. She was depressed. She, she was heartbroken. She had a small baby and the guy that was with her didn't want her anymore. And she was going to throw herself and her child over the river and her into the Nile River. And her dad told her that there was a conference coming and that she needed to come to it. And I'm standing there and she's telling me this story as I'm behind the stage. And she's telling me about this story and why she came to my conference. And, you know, for me, that was it, I had so many challenges trying to get there myself. My team had fell out. All stuff had happened. And it was like, OK, that's why I'm here. Right. Is that if we can make a change in somebody's life and they can go on and move forward in their life, we're doing a great thing. So that that's what we're doing. That's what it's about. Let's get it all over the world. How many people are experiencing moments like that? We see it yeah. all the time and they feel so alone. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very difficult to to be both a parent and a kid, right. you know? And it's it's in community where you know that you you can go through the ups and downs mm -hmm. and still come out on the other side. Absolutely. And persevere. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, what are some of the other issues? I know suicide is one that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's there's um a lot of attention on that right. because of social media has played such a role in I think on both sides as far as um <clears throat> it's interesting because it's part of the fuel but the solution right at, right? right where right. kids are challenged because they feel more pressure than ever mm -hmm. to compare 
and get the comments and the likes, but then you get the hate and the bullying and all the other things that come with being having an online presence. Right. But it can also be a solution to find positive things. So it's a, you know, just like anything else, there's a good and a bad, there's a, you know, the a bright side and a dark side. Right. What, what are some of the other things that you see uh, facing youth today uh, that <clears throat> parents and youth are coming and talking at your conferences about? The some of the issues that I'm seeing it, are issues like um, not really knowing what they want to do. Right, the we're seeing a lot of a lot of issues with kids wanting to follow. You know, they're following the trend. Right, they're following all the trends of the world today, and the challenge with following the trends. Uh, and what I'm what do I mean by trends? I mean just you know, whatever is cool at school at the time, right? There's a game where everybody's like, you know, pointing a gun at themselves or laughing on social media or whatever that trend is. And we're seeing them following those trends. And so a lot of kids are getting caught up uh, in the wash uh, with a lot of that. A lot of them just, you know, just kind of following uh, what it is that everybody's doing. And the thing about that is that it's always been that way. You know, you always have people that were just kind of following the crowd or just kind of doing what everyone else was doing. I just don't know if it was, if it had the same kind of impacts at such a large scale uh, as it did before. Uh, you're seeing a huge disparity uh, in learning, right? So you have a whole lot of kids right now that were out of school for almost two years, right? So you've seen a lot of social issues, like a whole lot of social issues, kids that don't know how to make a friend in person. Right. They don't know how to say hello. That's in person. a real thing. That is a real thing. That is <laughs> socially awkward yeah. moments are yeah. happening all over the world. All over. Yeah. Right now. I, I've yeah. it's amazing at how through technology is the only way that these relationships are being built and then you get face to face. Yep. And it's don't don't know what to do. They don't know what to do, right? You see somebody and they'll just kind of be looking at you and you're like, okay, it's okay to say hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you know, but they don't know how to deal with it. They can because they're on, you know, they're on their screen and they're like, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, yeah, I'm six, seven, I'm this, I'm that, you know, and then in person, that first of all, they that's not the like case. About right, this right. <laughs> <laughs> right, they're like half that size, yeah. and everything they said was totally, you know, untrue. Uh, and you know, it's like, like what happened? So you catfished me. You yeah. catfished me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's only going to continue to happen. That's something that's happening a lot uh, because you know we are relying so much on technology to even meet people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, maybe you can meet someone on, you know, one of the apps, but ultimately you got to talk in person, right? A relationship yeah. is like physical, you know? So <laughs> you no, know, it's such a yeah, different time. It is. And, you know, uh, let's be honest, everybody who is get, getting on this technology, whether a young person or, an older person, there's a lot of finessing going on. A whole lot. I like how you said that. A lot of finessing going on. Right. This is a little, this is a little, you put an extra, extra sauce on that. That's right. okay. Right. But, you know, the, the, the beauty of people coming together and having these interactions in person is where you get the vulnerability. And right. I think that's such a crucial part of learning and connecting is because we see in humanity, there is imperfection, right? Right. Because we're human. Right. And, and, and that's where I think the generation of I honestly, I don't even know what this is called is the pandemic time, you know, generation. <laughs> right, <laughs> where, the pandemic where, generation. Yeah, you know, this, this unusual experience uh -huh. of having such a hybrid or virtual, uh -huh. you know, right, a way to way to have to engage. Um, you 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 get taught differently you have to learn differently right. and it takes it takes a different level of energy and work right. to make you know to make things happen right. um 
but I and I and I know that history is being written right now. Yeah. People are writing articles and books and studies about kids <laughs> and and <laughs> everyone right. you know, through through what this experience is doing for right. um um mental health. That's like every article when I you know I'm reading different things is around Mental yes, health. So many of them is are around mental health. Yeah, and you're you're going to continue to see it, especially in youth, because the the studies that are going to come out in the next two to three years about the impacts of COVID are going to be staggering, uh, because there there was already a mental health conversation going on before COVID, and now you, you know you have kids that are just are dealing with a lot. I mean, think about it. You have kids, for example, that are in situations where their families were getting ready to split up. And then because of COVID, everybody's together and they're in the house and they've been in the house together for a long time. And because of the circumstances, they couldn't leave. Uh, what is that like, right? For that kid, you won't hear about that story for years to come about what that, what happened. Uh, and there's so many things that are happening. Um, but one of the things that, that happened that's really positive is, you know, parents had to, realize everything that the teachers were saying about their kid. You know, you've had to teach your kid for a long time now. <laughs> and so when the teacher yeah. was like, they're hard of hearing, they don't pay attention, they're disrespectful, they run around the classroom, all that stuff the teachers were saying, now they're seeing it at home. They're like, oh man, my kid really does need to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, because everybody wants to think Right. The highest, of course, right, 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 right. Your, your child, right. and they're 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 gifted and talented and skilled and smart, right. but there's also things opportunity areas, right? Like yeah, and like opportunity nah, areas, opportunity, <laughs> opportunity, <laughs> big and, opportunity and, areas, and that's the thing for so many parents. Anybody listening right now is saying. I didn't sign up to be a teacher. That's right. the reason they have a teacher. Right. I didn't do. I didn't sign up for this. But so right. many people have found themselves being a part-time teacher right. because they've had to do this at home and they've had to adjust their schedules oh, yeah. and all of their whole life right. around helping this child thrive right. in an unideal environment. Right. Because children thrive best when they are in interaction, not isolated, and certainly not just behind a screen. Right, right. So, right. yeah. Absolutely. That is <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're catching it because of that. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I assume that a lot of teachers will, will get raises, or at least they should, or they'll, uh, they'll get better <laughs> gifts during holiday season uh, for taking their kit, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I bet it was a it was a good holiday. Yeah. <laughs> <for them. laughs> this right. past season was right. like, oh my gosh, wow, this is like the coming from the fine section. Right, right, right. You know, this not is expensive this cheese. Is expensive this expensive is a, cheese, this right? Is expensive, you know, <laughs> wine. Right. Not just from the, you know, you had to go through through a, a glass cabinet with a key to get this to one. get this right, not the Auburn Mist this year. <laughs> 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 yeah, not the Arbor yeah. Mist. <laughs> you know, but one of the things that I hope, and and hopefully people listening can can feel this as a reality, is the while there are things that maybe our youth is missing, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that their resilience is something that really shines through this experience because um, they have had to go through some unique you know, such a unique situation. And, and I do think that they're, they're, they're doing a tremendous job, you know, growing up in a time where there's these type of limitations. Absolutely. Uh, I think that the, the future is really bright. The future is very bright uh, for, for the youth and what's going on because there are so many cool opportunities for them and there are opportunities around the world. So, you know, a kid can say, you know, hey, I want to be an engineer, but I don't want to be an engineer in the United States. I want to be an engineer in Malaysia and I want to go there and I want to live there and I want to and I'm going to invent something that that is, you know, world renowned there. Right. Mm -hmm. Or I want to, you know, 
I want to be an engineer, so I'm going to go to school in Hong Kong, and then I'm going to go get my master's down in South Africa, and then I'm going to go and get my doctorate in the UK, right? And they can actually do that and create who knows what. So the future is just amazing. Uh, and I think that the it's going to be bright for the ones that decide that it's going to be bright, right? The ones mm -hmm. that make that choice. I think that the ones that, um, you know, kind of succumb to the idea that everything is going to be dark is is kind of going to be the reality. Um, I think that we really can mold uh, the future that we want, right? The best way to predict the future is to invent it. And so when we start talking about inventing what we want, we start talking about what's going to come ahead. Uh, we can determine that. And so I think that it's going to be real powerful for kids coming forward. Yeah, I, I could not agree with you more. So I want to be able to ask you yes. some questions to yes. help listeners get to know you and right. uh, who you, the a little bit more behind SF Bank. So, sure. you know, the title of my show mm -hmm is born unbreakable right. and that you know comes from obviously my own experiences of having different challenges and recognizing that we're we're unbreakable right you know what what about your experience has helped you to recognize that you are unbreakable uh, the my desire to never give up. Uh, I went through, you know, so many challenges and deal with so many issues uh, that just the will to keep going every single day is what, you know, allowed me to see that I'm unbreakable. And, I, and really, because I started saying that to myself um, over and over again, uh, affirmations, reading books, you know, listening to other people, surrounding myself with people that were smarter and sharper than I am and just soaking in all their knowledge and energy. And, uh, that was really it. My faith, uh, I do believe in the higher power, uh, and that has saved me so many times in my life. And so, you know, that's, what's helped me believe that I'm unbreakable, um, that I refuse to not have what it is that I want in life. I love that. I love yeah. that. Okay. What is one thing that's on your bucket list? <laughs> uh, well, uh, man. Okay. Um, I want to let's see something that would be on my bucket list. Uh, I want to go to Egypt and I really want to, like, I would love to go to Egypt and take like a serious class on Egyptology, like really learn about like the libraries, like all that ancient knowledge that was there, because I just think that it's really fascinating uh, that there was a civilization of people that created a language that looks like pictures and that they, you know, just ruled the world for so long. We start talking about like ancient Kemet and stuff like that. Um, that's one. I mean, that's like that's like a nerdy bucket list kind of thing. Now, we start talking about like wild kind of stuff. Um I want to go to Mars, man. Like, I want to be one of those people that get to go to Mars and be able to see it. Like, I'm all about far out, like, Star Wars inter intergalactic thinking. Uh, <laughs> I think that um, there's so many different galaxies, and I want to go to Mars. That, that would be one that I want to do. I want to be one of those people that's like, man, I like touch down on Mars and like, I don't know, put a put a flag or something up there. I don't know what I would do. Uh, yeah. I might well, be yeah. Running man. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. Running man flips everything. I mean, I think I'm a part of the Guardian of the Galaxies, and hey. like, I watch <laughs> those shows. I'm like, I'm like one of those bonus extras and part of the team. You know, I'll tap in. Yeah, hey, I'll tap in. You know, right. Save the, save the galaxy, save the planet, or right. something. <laughs> right. 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 Hey, absolutely. That, no, that's awesome. I think those are those are big those are big things, and I think. You know, I like thinking of those things because it reminds us to dream. It reminds us. You see, when when you're young, you do that. Right. You have dreams and you and you talk about them and they're exciting. Yeah. And then yeah. as you get older, sometimes that fire gets diminished, yep. you know, through different different trials and tribulations of life. And we have to we have to remember that we have to keep that. 
Right. I have to keep that that ignition, you know, on so we can we can still live them out. And that's, that's right. why I, I love thinking about things like bucket list. Sure. Um, <clears throat> okay. What's a self-limiting belief that you've had to overcome? I had to overcome the, when I first started, it was, can I do it? Uh, it was a constant, I had a constant no that would come through my mind that I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do. So when I first started teaching self-defense to women and children, I knew the the techniques, but I didn't know if I could actually teach them. Um, and that, you know, so that was like, man, you know, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can make this happen. And so it was the self-confidence I really had to work through. With Camp Warrior King, it was the exact same thing. I didn't have any knowledge of working with youth. I didn't want to work with kids. Um, <laughs> I didn't know anything about, you know, work talking to parents or anything like that. Besides what I started doing with the martial arts program. And so it was there, you know, and it's just that, you know, you start to get to a point where it's like you believe that you can do it once you actually start doing it. Right. It's like you're not sure if you can until you start doing it. and You have to force yourself to do it anyway. And so that was, you know, some of the beliefs. And then it was, you know, I mean, so many. I mean, are people going to like it? You know, are people going to come to my camp? Are people going to buy this magazine? Are people going to come to these classes? You know, it was all of that, right? Nobody wants this. They can get this anywhere. You know, just all those different thoughts uh, that that I dealt with. I mean, just being completely transparent. I mean, I lost my savings when I did Camp Warrior King the first year. I mean, I was in the red. We were supposed to have 100 kids. We had 29. Uh, one of the, I mean, my staff were quitting. They were like, man, you can't pass no money. We're not going to be here. I had one guy that stayed. And uh, I said, man, listen, if you just hang out, uh, I will pay you back <laughs> the money that I owe you for work. And I've never been used to owing anybody anything. And uh, it took me three months to pay him back. He's been working with me for 10 years now. And, you know, it, it was just all of that. I mean, I had so many, so many challenges, so many failures that, but I just kept getting up. And that was the way that I was able to respond to it. Just keep going. That's perseverance. Yeah. In spite of the fears, in spite of the setbacks, in spite of the laughter, um, I mean, you know, just all that. My car caught on fire one time. I mean, just all kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Matter of fact, we, I mean, just the orphanage, um, the You Can Have It All orphanage was created through perseverance because when we started to go to Africa, you know, there were 14 people that were supposed to go. Everybody quit and said they weren't going. I was left by myself to go. And, you know, had you not gone, we wouldn't have that orphanage today to be able to pour into you and say, hey, look, you know, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. So but I didn't know if I could do it. I was honestly petrified to go on the other side of the globe by myself to talk with people I'd never seen before to put something together that I was trying to do in the United States, but wasn't sure if I could do somewhere else. And uh, but we did it anyway. And uh, and it came together. That's amazing. Yeah. What what would you say is one of your superpowers, strengths that you have? <clears throat> um, if I, I would have to re relate it to like Wolverine, right? Like I just I won't die. Like I refuse to die. I refuse yeah. to give up. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I, that's really awesome. Yeah. SF, if if you had to give one last piece of advice to anybody who's listening right now, what would that be? Enjoy the journey and choose, choose to be happy every day. That would be enjoy the journey and choose to be happy every day. Enjoy the journey because success is progressive. And so it's ongoing. The success is the path that you're on. It's not when you make a certain amount of money, that's cool. But money isn't going to complete you. Um, there are so many other things. It's a whole pie. But when you're on that journey and you, you know, start a project and you remember the beginning and then you look back and you see what it was like and where you are now, that journey is is really the success. Those are the stories you can tell and remember as you, you know, as you get older. Enjoy the journey uh, on your road to success and then choosing to be happy because there are people that have millions of dollars and are absolutely miserable. There are people that have very little money in their pocket and are filled with joy every single day. That tells us that that happiness is a choice that regardless of where you are and what you have, you can be happy. You can love your life every single day with what you have 
if you make mm -hmm. the choice to do that and then stick with it. Right. Because part of making the choice means that you're going to work towards that. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like I'm not going to let somebody ruin my day because they cut me off or they hung up in my face or told me they're not going to give me a deal. I'm going to be happy regardless. Right. Mm -hmm. Because life is too valuable uh, and too precious not to. So that would be my advice. Yeah, I, I love that you said it's a path. Yeah. Oftentimes, I think folks believe it's a destination yeah. versus a process, a right. journey right. that's ongoing, because it, it really is. There's, right. there's, there's, there's always more that you can push toward, right. you know, and there's always other accomplishments that are ahead of us. Right. So right. when we're when we're looking towards the next thing, that's how you stay motivated. That's right. right? That's right. Just looking towards that next that next uh, you know, um, <clears throat> the next mountain right. that you're going to climb. Right. 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 So Absolutely. I, I I love that. So how can people get in touch with you and follow what you're doing? Uh, they can connect on on social media. Uh, they can connect with me. SF Dreams Big. Uh, they can find me there uh, or they can go to you can have it all magazine and connect with us there. Uh, that would be the, the two fastest ways or they can call. The phone number is right on the website and mm -hmm. call. You know, if you have a question or, you know, or whether it's for camp or the magazine, you want to get your youth involved. You want to write with the magazine, you know, give us a call or send us an email. Uh, we're you know, I believe in being uh I, I love high tech, but I believe in high touch, which is being connected to people, being accessible. Right. As a business person, being easily accessible. Right. I'm not a prima donna. It's like, man, call me. Right. Hey, man, I'm thinking about this. I want to do that. And if it's a great idea, I'll be like, let's do it. If it's not, I'll be like, no. Right. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, you know, it's like so. Um, but, you know, just connect, man. You know, just make some stuff happen. Come on. High touch. That yeah. that is that is so big. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are like, well, you have to contact, you know, these 12 people before yeah. you can have yeah. this conversation with me and all this yeah. type of stuff. So um that but that's that's keeping it real, that's being genuine, um, making connections. And I think uh, that's one of the biggest things that's a blessing out of a time like this is people recognize that with a simple phone call or an email, you you can make a new connection right. that can go places you, you never thought it, you, it could. So if you're listening and you are a parent, or you are a, a youth, or you are somebody who wants to motivate, you have something to offer, and you feel like you want to contribute to this effort of you, you can have it all magazine or that this conference, this is such a great opportunity to a learn about it. So yeah. first and foremost, understand what it is, but, but secondly, reach out if you feel like you want to collaborate, connect, or have something to contribute. Um, SF, this has been so amazing. I'm awesome. so grateful for what you do, the space that you're in. And this is, impactful for generations and generations. And I think that's the beauty of it. It's a gift that can leave a legacy um, and just continue to turn into something even bigger. So I'm, I'm excited to, to watch it all unfold. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. S.F. Banks. What an incredible human being. I don't know about you, but all I could think about when he talked about this amazing camp that he puts on is why I didn't go to camp when I was a kid. And maybe they didn't have camps that were that cool when I was a kid, but if I could actually take the whole summer to immerse in a way like that where you can have fun, stay motivated, learn, build a community, develop all of that it's brilliant it's brilliant so i hope that you learned a lot from this episode certainly a lot about what sf does in his camps and his conferences um and 
I would highly encourage you to think about if it's not something that you could send your, your, your child to over there in Georgia to look for something that you can um, in your own state or country uh, if that's available or reach out to SF to see if there's something you can do to start something even if it starts out small. I think that's how ideas are built. You know, that's how innovation happens. And definitely check out the magazine. Our youth are such an important part of the world and our future. And I just get so excited inside to see people like SF dedicating their life every day to making that future even brighter. What a blessing. So hopefully today you take some time with the youth in your life to inspire them, whether that's through a story of your own learning to share with them and be vulnerable, whether that is to inspire through supporting them with an issue that they're going through or something that they're learning. And maybe it is connecting them in community to somebody like a, a, a teacher, a mentor, a pastor, a, any anybody that you think is going to inspire and enlighten our young people, which I know may seem a little bit more daunting or challenging given the time that we're in. Uh, it is still a pandemic, if we can believe it, <laughs> two years, but there's, there's still so much we can do and a lot that we have access to thanks to the internet. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Tune in again next time for another inspiring episode of the Born Unbreakable podcast. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. You are your only limit, so take action today and share this episode with someone you think could be inspired by it. See you next time.